If you've ever seen images of Abbey Road Studios, Abbey Road Mastering, they used to build a lot of their own equipment going back in the days to the 50s and 60s. And they had all these desks, which are TG desks, and they've got these big kind of rooster pots on them and loads of big faders and all this kind of stuff. They look epic. I mean, they do look really cool. And they're big metal things and, you know, Dark Side of the Moon and you know, all things like the Beatles were done on them. And then the mastering, all the cutting was done. And these, these desks are kind of rare and only a certain amount of engineers have them. Abbey Road still have them, obviously, and they have modules. They made these into the Chandler series as well. So you know them from that, you know what they look like. So the desks are all kind of metal. They look really cool. So they've put all of that into a plugin. And so let's dive into my computer and check it out now. So here we are in the Abbey Road TG mastering chain. Uh, love their old desks, their mastering desks. They look amazing. I'd love to have one just to make it look good in my room. I probably would never use it, but um, it, they do look great. I think they sound great as well, I've heard. I've never actually had the joy of working on one. I've seen them a lot, but um, and obviously I've used the Chandler Curve Bender. I had one of those, which is based off of it, and... Uh, and things like that. So I've had similar things, but not the actual real thing. So here we go. This is their mastering chain. Let's briefly run through this. This is a input stage here. So this is input. Then the next panel is EQ. They call it tone at the bottom. You can see there. And then this next one is a limiter. And then this next one's a filter. And then this is an output. So you can move these around, which is pretty cool. So I would put the filters first, if this was me setting up. Inputs, you obviously want at the front so that you can see what signal's coming in, make sure that's all sorted out. I'd do some cuts at the front and then do some EQ, then limiting. That's it, really. So anyway, let's dive in what they've got. You've got different ways to select stuff. You can go stereo or MS. Um, also, there's this button at the top here, which when you click it, it opens up that whole section and then you can split the left and right signal for each one of the different parts of the mastering chain. So input, tone, stereo left and right. You can see here on the right, left and right here, it says L and R. And if you're in MS mode, which I am here, M and S. And then the limiter, you can do the same and the filter, you can do the same. So basically, let's go back to to keep it non-confusing let's go back to where it's just in stereo mode um, and just keep all these in stereo keep it nice and simple for demo reasons and in here we've got input level with input trim which is good and then you've got a tape equalizer now you have two different types of tape IEC and NAB and uh, these are ways of just making them sound different so they're different different curves, if you like, for the sound of those tapes. And then you have a transpose, which you can so you can change that into it to transpose the sound as well. And uh, pole left and right. And then the balance, you can change the balance a bit going into the desk. And then you can also mess around with the phase as well. So if you're having phase issues, you can play around with that, and move that around. But we'll keep all those on zero. The next stage, as I said, is the filters. So you've got a low pass filter. So this is 20, 15, 10. So this is cutting the tops. And then we've got this presence section around here. So this is the kind of mid. So we've got 500 Hertz going up to 10K. So if you wanted to, you know, add a little bit of vocal presence or something around 2.8, then you can, um, you can do that and add that. There's a little, you know, amount here that you can add. That's a, that'll be on a bell curve that's kind of set, that cur that um, cue for that. So you can't adjust the cue, but you can obviously add as much or take away. And then we have a high pass filter here. So that's cutting the low end and that starts at 40, which is a bit thing. But because it's old school and mastering desks in the olden days would cut a lot higher because they didn't have as much sub bass going on for vinyl and 
in music in general when this stuff was around it would be guitars and things like that and yes there was sub bass but not a lot of things could really reproduce the sub bass so you'd end up cutting a lot of that off where these days with a lot of dance music and hip hop and urban stuff then you're going to leave a lot of that on so I would always want to be going lower than 40 but occasionally you might do all the old mastering engineers that I used to work with and have worked with over the years that are retiring now, they all cut everything at 40 because they come from this day and age of this stuff where you did. But um, yeah, if you start cutting at 40 these days, you start losing kick drums and subs and all that kind of stuff and it can take away from the vibe. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't suggest that. So then next section, we have tone. We've got the high and then the next one down. So highs go to 18, is that 16? Sorry, my eyesight's rubbish. And then we've got different bats. So this is like, you know, shelves. And then this is the kind of how wide you can have the sound. So the Q is here. So this is the, sh oh, they're calling it shape. Sorry, I didn't see that. Yeah, so the shape, the Q is here. And then the gain, obviously, down and up. And then different frequencies. So frequencies are quite good. They go down to 32 hertz, which give you a nice little bump in the low end. And then they go up to 16. It'd be nice if they went even higher. But again, as I say, I don't think, because in olden times, olden days, 50 years ago, anything over 16K, trying to get that onto vinyl, just would make the cutter head go mental. So people weren't really thinking in extremes then. So that that's probably why that only goes up to 6K, 16K on the desk. Now we get into the limiter section. So then we have recovery. So how fast the music recovers, how quickly it comes back. So that's like a relief, release time on a compressor. And we have a couple of different types of sounds here. We've got original, modern and limit. So these are compressor sounds I would say so limit modern and things so limit usually at yeah, fast and then we've got different ratios we can set it to so you can go 100 to 1 or 1 to 1 so that's really using your ears to work out which one would work best and then we have makeup gain so if you want to add more level to the uh, limiter then which is you would do most of the time so that's kind of pushing the level in before we get to the outputs here and then there is a um, side chain, and I think this is to do with the mix thing, but I'm not too sure, so don't quote me on that. But this could be just with how much side chain you're putting in, so you can side chain the limiter, basically. And um, yeah, so that's what that does. And then there's a gain reduction here, so you can see what's happening. Then we get to the output bit, which has got a spreader. Uh, as Ian Cooper used to say at Metropolis, the muck spreader. So you can just spread the signal out a bit and, uh, you know, it just gives you a sort of, can get a bit phasey when you get too wide, but you just, so just keep it, go easy on that and you can really spoil people's mixes by spreading the sound too much. It's very addictive. It sounds great, first of all, when you first use it, but yeah, just go easy. Then we have some where we can just monitor the left signal, stereo, right, mid signal, and then the mono signal and then the sides. So we want to count in stereo. And then uh, there's an output gain here. You can load up some presets here. And as you would tell, there's no streaky presets, which is um, a shame. Because of that, Go to streaky.com, sign up for my Audio Anorax newsletter, and in my resources section of that, there is some streaky settings for this plugin. So if you want a few standard settings for this that I've made up, go to my site, streaky.com, sign up for the newsletter, and then you can get as many presets for this as I've done, so you can add them here. So there we have it. That is the TG mastering chain. Uh, I've run a few things through it. Do I like the sound? I do like the sound. It sounds very clear, very posh sounding. I need to have a little bit more in-depth time with it to really get my head into it, which I haven't had the chance to yet, but um, I will do, and that will all be on the presets at streaky.com. So go there, sign up to the newsletter, and you can get presets, not just for this, but presets for other things that I've reviewed in the past. So um, yeah, go there and get that. Uh, this is definitely worth having a look at, having a play with. It's on demo, so you can play around with it. I've explained to you exactly what to do and a few little tidbits as we've gone along. So I hope that helps you.
Well, that's it. That's the TG console. If you can't afford to get the real thing in your studio, or if you can find one, that is, then uh, that's probably the best you're going to get. So I hope you enjoyed this. Now, remember to go to streaky.com, sign up to the Audio Anorax newsletter, where I'll give you some presets for this plugin. There's other presets as well for other plugins when you are a member of there. And also, every month you get a newsletter where you get free stuff, giveaways, uh, discounts that I get given that I then pass on to you guys. There's 25,000 other people there. It's only once a month. I won't spam you. You'll love it. Trust me. Uh, yeah, go to streaky.com, sign up to the Audio Anorax newsletter. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.